Hey, Nick here. Thank you guys for watching my videos. Today I want to talk about an aftermarket brake booster and dual master cylinder assembly I installed onto a customer's 1962 Thunderbird convertible recently. While working on my customer's car, I was unable to find an original rebuilt brake booster. Everyone required me to send in the old booster and wait for it to be rebuilt and returned. This could take up to a month or longer. I cannot have a car disabled in my shop for that long, and I was hoping that someone could send me one that had been rebuilt, and then I'd send the defective booster back once I received the rebuilt one. Nobody would do that because they are becoming so rare. They want the core back first. Then the customer suggested that I install an aftermarket brake booster and dual master cylinder package that he had seen on eBay. Coincidentally, a few days before he had asked me to do this, I had seen one of these aftermarket brake booster dual master cylinder assemblies on a 1961 Thunderbird in a U on a YouTube video, and it fit beautifully without having to cut or modify the cross brace. I was impressed by the installation. The customer gave me the item number of the brake booster master cylinder assembly on eBay, so I looked it up. And the listing title of the item says, and I quote, 1961 to 64 Ford Thunderbird power brake booster and master cylinder disc drum, unquote. The description of the item goes on to say, quote, this is a new eight inch power booster and dual bowl master cylinder for 1961 to 64 Ford Thunderbird. This setup is for front disc and rear drum. We do include a provision for the brake light switch with this assembly, unquote. They don't even know that 1961 to 64 Thunderbirds do not have front disc brakes, and there is no provision for the brake light switch on the master cylinder. Anyway, I agreed to install it onto my customer's car because I saw that YouTube video showing it on the 61 Thunderbird, so I purchased it. Once delivered, I immediately noticed that the bracket included in the kit looked nothing like the original bracket. The original bracket is basically square, and the aftermarket bracket is wedge-shaped. You will see this in the video. It was immediately clear at that point that the aftermarket bracket would not work. I then looked for something on YouTube that could help me, but found nothing. I then called the company who sold it to me, and spoke to their tech man. He flatly refused to help me, claiming that of the hundreds of units they sold, not one person except me has complained. So there is no reason why they should believe that there is a problem with their booster assembly. Also, his attitude was so condescending that it was clear that if I had dropped dead that moment, he could have cared less. Nice customer service. So my advice to you guys is not to purchase this product from them. I will not name this company. I purchased this aftermarket break. I will not name the company I purchased this from because they are a dishonest company and are totally misrepresenting their product. After watching my video, you will see exactly what is wrong with it and that their claim that I was the only complainer is BS. Just for the record, this aftermarket brake booster master cylinder assembly does not fit on any Thunderbird and requires major modifications to the bracket to make it fit as my video shows. This company sucks and I do not recommend them. The purpose of my video is to show the many Thunderbird owners that, I, that want a dual master cylinder how to modify this unit to fit your car even though I'm not recommending it. However, after installation and the modifications I needed to make, the booster master cylinder assembly performed well, and I was happy with the results. So, because it performed well, I decided to publish this video for you guys, and not for the sleazy company that sold it to me. So good luck, and thank you for watching my videos. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. Go Raiders. <laughs> hey, Nick here for another fabulous 
upcoming video about um, aftermarket brake booster and master cylinder uh, going on a 1962 Thunderbird. Now I've never made this modification before. The customer wants me to do this. Uh, I agreed to try it because I've never done it before and in trying to find him the stock brake booster, he has a, a band types, I'm sorry, he has a screw type. I think it's a Midland, the screw type with the screws around the outside of the, you know, two metal pieces held together with screws, has a metal valve. Uh, I couldn't find one where they would not send it to me without me sending my core in first. That's how rare they're becoming, how hard they are to get. Uh, and one of the dealers said that uh, the guy who rebuilds them had been in a car accident and he, they didn't really know how available he was to work on it if I had sent it in in the first place. So the customer told me about this part on eBay. He pointed it out, asked me if I would get it and install it on his car. So that's what I'm gonna do. It's a dual master cylinder, comes with a proportioning valve, but this car has drum brakes. So I'm not going to use the proportioning valve. The proportioning valve is only necessary if you have disc brakes so that you equalize the braking pressure between the front and rear. Comes with a bracket to hold it to the firewall, a rod to go to the brake pedal, booster, dual master cylinder. The brake switch is in here. This connects to the pedal assembly. Goes on the rod here. I don't know what this is for. Maybe holding the, uh, maybe holding that, but these holes don't line up. They don't line up. So I don't know. Have to figure that one out. Anyway, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna try to install this. So I'll show you, I gotta take the booster off. I gotta take the booster and master cylinder off the car first. I've already pulled the master cylinder off. I'm gonna go under the dash now. Okay, I'm under the dash. Now I'm just gonna tell you what I'm gonna do because I can't work and hold the camera at the same time. I'm gonna disconnect the brake rod from the booster. I'm gonna disconnect it from here. This is the pedal assembly. See, I'm shaking the pedal. It has to be disconnected from there. I'm gonna disconnect these bolts here. Uh, no. Here, the one on top of it, and there's two on the other side as well. Okay, I just uh, got out from under the dash, unbolting this booster. Uh, I felt like Reese in the Terminator coming through the time portal. I probably groaned as much as he did too. That's brutal. It's like super duper hot in here. And uh, I'm sweating pretty bad. I'm fat and old, so that's what happens. So anyway, that's unbolted, so this should pull out like that. There, see? Okay. Steel valve, that's correct. They should not have a plastic. They I've seen them with plastic ones. Originally, they came with steel ones. They can be retrofitted for plastic. These break. This one's broken here. Broken off. Yeah. It's still good. When I send these out, I loosen this, and I spin these around so they're pointing in so they don't get broken off. Okay, so I got the... Uh, let's put these aside. I'm not going to need those. I'm not gonna need this. I'm not gonna need the switch right now, the rod. I'm not gonna need these things right now. Put them over here. I'm not gonna need the master. So, 
Here's the brackets and here's the ones they gave me. This is at an angle, why did they do that? I could use the this bracket on here, right? If it'll fit over this. Yeah, these brackets don't, they're not long enough. I'll try putting this on here. Then you have to remember how you took it off. The, the swivel is on the bottom and it angles down. The whole thing angles down. This is the top. So just so you know, as a reference. Let's take the clip off. The clip here that holds the bracket assembly. Holds the bracket assembly to the brake booster rod. That's gonna go flying. Okay, see? That's the correct clip for that, for that rod. And then put the, push the rod out. Okay, put that back on the rod. Okay, that's off, all right. I just noticed something. This has an eyelet at the end. This is just a straight rod that goes to this that will ultimately go to the brake pedal. So this whole mechanism is being bypassed. Not only that, this bracket assembly lowers the rod so it'll go through the brake boost, through the firewall property properly. This doesn't. So there's the first problem. And it's interesting because on the, of course, on the website, oh, this fits a 62 Thunderbird perfectly. And then another problem, these have studs, these don't have studs. So these go through the firewall, then you can bolt them on from the back. These have no such thing. So then the next question is, is maybe this will bolt to the firewall. But I can see that this dimension is not the same as this dimension. Let's see if this will just bolt right up to the firewall without a bracket. See, look at that. See, it's lower. It's closer to the bottom bolts. Yeah, it's closer to the bottom bolts when it's sticking straight out than the upper bolts. It's not centered between the bolts. This is centered. That won't work. So another thing to keep in mind that I got I gotta keep in mind when I'm putting those brackets on the booster, you have an offset hole here. The hole is not centered between the mounting points, it's down. So you, we have to keep that in mind when we're putting the bracket on so we can try to, the, the, the stud on the booster, we try to center it as best we can. Um, I gotta eyeball it. Okay, so this is what I did so far. I'm gonna try to put this, I'm gonna try to put this booster on the firewall with these brackets that will make the booster point up. I've got these tight. I put the brackets all the way up. That brings this down because this is down. The rod is down, right? So anyway, I'm doing my first test. So now I gotta know if this is the same spread as the bracket the spread of the holes on the firewall. Now this bracket, this bracket, 
is the same spread as the holes on the firewall are where these will go through. So if I measure these center to center, inch and five sixteenths really, okay, so yeah, it's about an inch and a quarter, three inches and a quarter, sorry, three inches and a, roughly, it's about a three inches and a quarter. Okay, this is um, center to center, two and a quarter, two and a quarter. Let's just call it two and a quarter. This is a little bit wider. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, this one, can you see? Yeah, this is the top, top, bottom. Okay, the top one I'm gonna put all the way down. I'm gonna put that all the way down. Okay. Same with this one, top one all the way down. See, the, they're adjustable, see? All the way down. Five sixteenths, 18 bolts by One and a half, five sixteenths, 18 by one and a half, five sixteenths, 18 threaded nuts. Now these little spacers I had in stock from a million years ago, I don't remember how I got them. They're about, uh, they're about a quarter of an inch thick. Because the bolts had a shoulder on them. So I had to put these spacers on to take up the shoulder. I, I could go out, this is all I have right now. I could go out and buy five, six, eight, 18, one half long bolts that are threaded all the way down to the head with no shoulder. I could do that, I should do that. But in the meantime, I'm just doing this to check it on the car. So we wanna go two and a quarter, right? That's just about two and a quarter. I'm just gonna tighten it there and let's see where it, how it fits on the car. Cause these are smaller than the holes than these, you know? So the little bit of play might uh, help. Okay. Okay. So that's roughly the same spread as this. Okay. So that should fit right into the firewall. Now, whether that goes into the hole or not is another matter. I'm gonna, let me push that on all the way. Now, this is another problem, clearly. The rod, look at, <laughs> Jesus. This just is not gonna work, look at this. It's, it's obviously not gonna work because it's not coming out straight like this was. You know, I don't think it went into the firewall like that. I think it came out straight. I think Ford positioned this properly so this rod is coming out straight at a 90 degree angle. Not like that, not like this is. This is Mickey Mouse, man. Okay, it's just a smidgen too wide. I'm gonna lower the, oh, the top ones I can't lower, that's right. I have to bring the bottom ones up. They're just a smidgen too wide. Uh, and I mean a smidgen, an eighth of an inch. Yeah, so that's that's about 2.3, and this is about 2.5, 2.4 and a half. 2.3 and a half, okay, so that's what? A tenth of an inch. Move it a tenth of an inch. Yeah. Okay, I'll be back. I'll be back. So my first attempt at getting this thing on, you can see how putting the booster onto the firewall, you can see how the rod is pointing down. It's not pointing straight back towards the 
rod right there. See the rod where it's supposed, that stud that it's supposed to go on to? It's not pointing at that, it's pointing down. And that's no good. So either I'm doing something wrong or I put the brackets on wrong or the brackets are not right. So I gotta take it off and look at it again. Now in this position, the booster is pointing up. I'm gonna take it off again and try that again. I, I might be able to use spacers and remedy that. So I'm gonna try that as well. And I bought some longer bolts so I could put on some spacers. Like I said, the, the, it came with no instructions whatsoever. All right, so I had it on the car like this just now, right? Here's the firewall, right? Here's straight. You can see how the, I think you can see how the booster is pointing up, right? It's kind of, you know, if, if this was horizontal, it's up from that. If this is bolted to the firewall, if I reverse these, it's going to be pointing down like that. So if I reverse the, if I reverse the bracket, look at this. If I reverse the bracket, now this is pointing up, not straight out. Like it's not coming straight out like that. It's pointing up like that. That doesn't work. No matter what I do, it doesn't work. So then I could space it. These spacers. Remove the spacers. Get off me. <laughs> Bugs, man. Um, yeah, maybe if I did that. Put the spacer on the other side. Let's try that. No, I'm doing this wrong. Let's put them back the way they were, like this. Right? Now, if I'm gonna space it, let me think about this. If I'm gonna space it, that's gonna straighten it more, yeah. Remember, I'm using the spacers because these bolts have shoulders. I couldn't find bolts that were threaded all the way. It's stupid. I got some all thread. I did buy some all thread. Might have to use that. Now that made it worse. Here's the firewall, right? That, that didn't work. What the hell am I thinking? This is so Mickey Mouse. I'm really pissed that this company didn't have the balls to put in an instruction sheet. They claim it's for a 62 T-Bird, but they don't tell you how it fits. They don't tell you nothing. Nothing, no instruction seat whatsoever. Up to you to figure it out. Okay, if we do that. Yeah, that's it. So, put the spacer on the other side, right? So then, 
Where were these at? Remember, we had to measure these. Put these on just loosely so to give it some support. Okay, now this is the now this is going to be pointing. The brackets are on it now. I reversed the brackets, right? Now the booster is going to be pointing down, but with the spacers. See, the booster is now pointing down. See? So we're almost level. Yeah, just about. Okay? So almost it should be able to go in the firewall. We'll find out. Tighten these up. Now I gotta switch the other side, so I'm gonna do this one. 1.3, 2.3, sorry, I always say that. Why? Okay, measure it again. 1.3, this one's a little, it's a tad longer, like, like a 30 seconds of an inch. So, here's the firewall. Okay. That's pretty straight. This is the top of the booster. So these have got to, the brackets have got to go up, right? All the way, yeah. Make sure they're all tight. Right? Looks straight to me, 90 degrees. Let's try that. All right, so I put it on the car. Now this is too high, so when it goes through the firewall, here's the firewall, right? This is too high. The stud, the stud on the brake pedal is down here. It's not right out straight from that. It's down here. And there's you can't force this down like that. This has to be in its neutral position. So I have to move the... I have to move the booster so that this will shift like that. Brackets stay in place and the booster shifts so the stud comes down. So the stud on the booster comes down like that. And I think the easiest way is to put spacers under the bracket. Put spacers, this is up. Spacers under the bracket, which will bring the bracket this way, which will then lower the stud that way. Here it is now. We want to lower it like that, just slightly. Like about that. Basically, see how it's, see how these are straight and that's curved up. Basically, we want to get this to be coming out straight like these are. We want it to be here, just like the studs are. We don't want it to be up at an angle like that. So I'm gonna put as many spacers as I need to get this to come out straight. Does that look straight? No, it's still not straight. See, I'm going already going the thickness of a spacer. So I might as well just put a spacer in there. Now 
That is, is that Mickey Mouse or what? Is that the most Mickey Mouse thing you've seen? So another thing to keep in mind that I got, I gotta keep in mind when I'm putting those brackets on the booster, you have an offset hole here. The hole is not centered between the mounting points, it's down. So you, we have to keep that in mind when we're putting the bracket on so we can try to, the, the, the stud on the booster, we try to center it as best we can. Um, I gotta eyeball it. And then I, I know uh, some of you, I've thought about this earlier, I haven't gotten to that part of the video yet, but how are you gonna seal this hole once it's all done? That's another issue. So in case any of you are thinking about that now, that's another problem. How do we seal that hole? Because there is no boot. You can't, there's no boot for it. The original boot that the car had is, is no good. I don't know what happened to it. it was up here. No. Anyway, uh, so we got to keep that in mind.